Hi everyone, I am here today to review Two Steps Forward by Graham Simsian and Anne Buist. And these authors are husband and wife, so the co-writing of this book is quite interesting and it's something I wanted to research more for this review, but I've not found out an awful lot yet, so I've failed my job there, terribly sorry. But yeah, this book blew me away. I gave it five stars and I received a free copy of it from the publishers via NetGalley and oh my god I just I just want everyone to read this book and I understand that not everyone's gonna feel this way about this book because my good friend Eva Fred Weasley died laughing also read this book not long after me and wasn't that big a fan of it at all and I do think that before I even get more into the story of this one you might have different opinions on this depending on whether you've ever walked the Camino or not because that is what this book focuses on. So you've got two main characters. You've got Zoe who is a mid middle-aged woman from the US whose husband has recently died and you've got Martin who is from Northern England and is a middle-aged man and they are both going to do the Camino which is a walk that can start either in France or in Spain, you can walk just the France bit or you can walk France to Spain and there's loads of different routes and everything. And I didn't even know this existed before this book started, before I picked up this book, not going to lie. So Zoe is doing this walk because she wants to kind of get her head around the thoughts of everything that's been going on with her husband passing and just, you know, just sort her mind out. She's there for proper self-discovery. Martin, on the other hand, is doing this walk because he is an engineer and he has designed a bag that you would pull along on wheels to do the walk rather than wearing a backpack, which a lot of people would probably think is cheating. But the one thing I've learned from this book is everyone walks the Camino for different reasons and for different lengths of time and there is no right or wrong way to do the Camino and it will change you. That is essentially what I got from this book. So I feel like this is a real character growth novel. And even Martin, who went there wanting to sort of just test his, like his engineering workout, test his product out, he ended up even kind of reflecting himself and walking to sort his own head out, not just because of testing his bag out. It will change you and it will also test you. So they both start the Camino at a similar time and you get alternating perspectives throughout the novel between the two of them and where they are at their walk right now, whether they're anywhere near each other or not, what is going on with other people they meet on the walk and I haven't confirmed this but I've sort of assumed that Anne probably wrote Zoe's chapters and Martin, um, Graham probably wrote Martin's chapters and they probably just kind of conferred a little bit about what had happened where and that's what I'm guessing at least. I might be wrong, I wanted to find out and I haven't got around to finding out so that is speculation on my point. But they both start the walk at similar times and at the beginning of the novel they can't stand each other. They really can't, they've just got such different ideas of what each other kind of think. Especially Zoe, she's particularly not a massive fan of Martin at all. Whereas Martin kind of is just more entertained by Zoe and how ill-equipped she is at the start of this for the walk. Because they are starting this in the winter months, which is such a bad idea because the weather is horrific. And this book just really amuses me in the way that you can learn about the damage of first impressions and how difficult it is to get past a bad first impression. I feel like in some ways this book is quite accurate about the actual walk itself because the authors have done it twice themselves and so they've got a real idea of what it would involve kind of in terms of how much hard work the walk is, in terms of the camaraderie of people that you might meet and the experience of walking and sort of meeting up with people at different stages because different people are walking at different paces and doing different things at different places. So I feel like you get a really accurate kind of idea of what it would be like in those terms. Aoife did mention, and I want to bring this up briefly because she has got a very different idea to me because she has walked part of this and I haven't. She brought up that she thought that there was some snobbery in terms of different parts of the Camino and that the authors perhaps were quite judgmental about their ideas of what it means to walk it because they have obviously done the whole thing whereas Aoife has done like a week's worth. And obviously different people have different timescales in what they can afford to take off work for example so it's not realistic to expect that everyone can do the whole walk. 
And when she pointed out this kind of snobbery to me, I was like, I can see that actually. I can see that they think that the French bit is definitely superior or walking the whole thing from France to Spain is superior to just doing like a week's worth here or a week's worth there. But I didn't pick up on it when I was reading it because I haven't done the walk. She's pointed this out to me and I, as I said, I can see where she's coming from with it. And I just wanted to mention that briefly because as I said, if you have walked the Camino, you might not enjoy this book as much as I did because you might also be bothered by that snobbery. I really enjoyed the dual perspectives because it was really interesting to see what each character was thinking about the other character when certain things were happening. So Martin would be like seeing Zoe do something really stupid and he'd be like really entertained. And then she, you'd get her perspective of it where she'd be like, and he's just such an arrogant blah, blah, blah. Like it was great just kind of seeing the same period of time, but through two totally different eyes. The characters also get a bit of tension on the go. They're a bit immature at times. They kind of almost end up together, then don't. And this happens so much. It seems really drama filled. And I feel like this is kind of okay. I was okay with the drama of this because I felt like these two characters were going through some major stuff by this point. This walk was kind of killing them in terms of how much thinking time they had and how much time they had to reflect upon what had been going on. And so I felt that it was quite realistic because they were emotionally drained at this point and just any little thing was setting them off. So I am okay with that. And I think that this book just really helps emphasize how important it is to take time out for yourself to really just take care of yourself mentally. I found that I flew through this book. I kept thinking, I want to know what happens next. I want to know how the walk's gonna go from here. I want to see whether they both make it to where they want to go because they were both wanting to walk to different stages so it just it kept me page turning this is a page turner and if you've read graham simsian's other kind of known work the rosie project this is totally different to that so if you enjoyed the rosie project it doesn't mean that you will like this if you hated the rosie project it doesn't mean that you will hate this so don't kind of judge this book by the rosie project they are two totally different things and you might want to pick this up if you enjoy character driven stories because other than walking not an awful lot else happens and if you hate character studies this may not be the book for you. I think this has totally been left open for a sequel and part of me really hopes that there will be one because I would love to see where the characters go from here and I think that would be a really interesting addition to this book. In the meantime because I enjoyed this so much I definitely want to pick up more books by these two authors. I've recently downloaded an Anne Buist book and I'm hoping to read that soon. So in the meantime, I'm definitely going to be checking out more books by these authors and can't recommend this book enough. Definitely one of my favourite books of the year. Not the favourite, but up there in the top 10 right now. So thank you so much for watching this review. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking the image of me if you want to see more book reviews and other bookish content from me and I will see you soon. Bye bye!